Hey guys, it's Emma Viggling with TYT Politics. Sorry if you were watching my last stream, but uh, Jordan called me with some breaking news. Jamie Harrison, one of the DNC chair candidates, has dropped out and endorsed Perez. Perez, the person who I'm talking about in this story. That's a big leg up for him. Honestly, it's pretty even now. Ellison or Perez. And the, what I'm about to talk to you about makes makes it extremely clear why Keith Ellison cannot be DNC chair and if he is and if he is the DNC is irrelevant like I'm this is how monumental th this election is going to be so obviously Tom Perez is a front runner for DNC chair it's pretty much a two-man race between him and Keith Ellison representative from Minnesota who was endorsed by Bernie Sanders. Perez is the former Secretary of Labor under President Obama, and before that, he was the U.S. Assistant uh, Attorney General for Civil Rights. Um, there's a great Intercept article about both of his positions and his softness when it came to big banks, both uh, as Secretary of Labor and U.S. Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights. And I'm going to break down some of that article for you, and I will put it uh, in, in the in the description box after this video is done. So, in uh, February of 2010, J.P. Morgan Vice President, one of them, Stephanie Mudik, admitted to something horrible. Something that both Republicans and Democrats should be against, theoretically, and should be ashamed of, and would want to prosecute for it. And would want to throw the book at. Both re Republicans and Democrats. Here, let me read to you what J.P. Morgan did. Mudik confirmed allegations that J.P. Morgan had foreclosed on active duty soldiers in violation of the Service Members Civil Relief Act, SCRA. The SCRA was first enacted during the Civil War and is designed to cap interest rates and prevent foreclosures for active duty troops. Violations can potentially be charged as misdemeanors punishable by up to a year in prison. So this statute is as old as the Civil War. That's how long the morality has been about foreclosing on people in active duty serving our country. Both Republicans and Democrats should be outraged by this. And at the time, they were when they used it for a political prop and grandstanding. Representative Bob Filner of California, the ranking Democrat at the time in the House Veterans Affairs Committee, I'm not sure if he still is actually, he said this, People who are under pressure commit suicide. I would call it homicide, frankly, because you are putting them under pressure. You are responsible for that. that that's strong words from a Democrat. And the Republicans, you know, smacked her on the wrist as well. That, them and the rest of J.P. Morgan. The law limits interest rates that banks can charge soldiers while they're in active duty uh, at 6%. J.P. Morgan violated that particular law. And the lawyers who were representing uh, these soldiers wanted criminal prosecution. They wanted these bankers to go to prison and they wanted some accountability. They didn't get that accountability, unfortunately. And yes, just for some context, it is true that the SCRA is rarely used for uh, prison sentences and, and prison prosecutions that, you know, prosecutions that result in prison sentences. But again, the scope to which the financial crash, you know, the scope of the financial crash and the scope to which uh, these individuals and at J.P. Morgan did this is also unprecedented. Uh, the, the Intercept article explains further. The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency documented 1,622 SCRA violations, including over 1,000 completed foreclosures of active duty troops. 1,000 foreclosures of active duty troops. No one ever did get convicted of a crime. And the person who was running the division of the Department of Justice with jurisdiction over the SCRA, uh, over the SCRA at the time was Tom Perez. From 2009 to 2013, he was the Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights. Perez himself continually touted his division's work in the SCRA. But in 2011, Congressman Brad Miller and Walter Jones wrote to the Department, uh, Justice Department about these violations, noting... The continued failure to pursue criminal charges in the face of fra uh, flagrant violations of the criminal law is destroying America's faith in their government and democracy. 
The Justice Department later reached a settlement with banks over these violations, including J.P. Morgan, offering monetary payouts to soldiers, but no individuals were held accountable. Here's some irony. One banker who profited through these illegal, for illegal foreclosures was Steven Mnuchin, whose bank One West was caught violating the law. One West had 54 documented SCRA violations, and Mnuchin is now Donald Trump's Treasury Secretary. Whoo lordy. So, uh, one banker who profited from them, Steve Mnuchin. There is a sickness in our government. Because the very people that are screwing over our soldiers, who, by the way, Republicans love the military, right? But not, not when they can make a profit off of them and take away their homes while they're abroad, risking their lives for the war on terror. God, it's unbelievable. And now the Mnuchin is rewarded and he's treasury secretary. How sick is our democracy right now? How, how plagued is our government? And it's the fault of corporate Democrats like Tom Perez for not holding these guys accountable when they had the power. <sighs> In 2013, Perez left the Department of Justice to become Labor Secretary. And you know what? Much of the spinelessness continued there too. The Department of Labor has significant bank regulatory authority involving pension funds. Financial institutions found guilty of certain crimes, for instance, are barred from managing pensions unless granted waivers by the Department of Labor. In 2015, Democratic Representative Maxine Waters, good for her, asked Perez to hold off such waivers for large banks that had pled guilty to conspiring to rig the foreign exchange markets. But UBS, Barclays, JP Morgan, Royal Bank of Scotland Group, and Citigroup received waivers, letting them go back to managing pension money. <sighs> to be fair, Perez wasn't a complete doormat. He did these things. He implemented a conflict of interest rule to stop financial advisors from cheating people. He adopted the regulation to help more people earn overtime time. And he advocated for a rule to help home workers aid their bargaining leverage. That's all good things. But when, it when it's about standing up to people who have the power, Perez isn't really about that. And that's how he would be as DNC chair. And that's how he would be in standing up to the corporate Democrats. And you know, even given that nuance, Tom Perez is a corporate Democrat. He's not going to stand up to the very people that we want him to. So this, uh, during, when he was, you know, implemented in the WikiLeaks, he was, if you guys don't remember that, this is what uh, was said in them, and it's summarized by The Observer. An email released by WikiLeaks from Clinton campaign chair John Podesta revealed that Perez advised the Clinton campaign to whitewash Bernie Sanders' campaign during the Democratic primaries in order to repel minority supporters. Perez recommended Nevada as the best opportunity to do so. Despite the fact that Clinton ultimately won Nevada, polls noted that more Latinos voted for Sanders. At Perez's recommendation, the mainstream media and Clinton campaign propagated the false narrative that Sanders supporters were sexist white males, though they had little to no evidence to substantiate these claims. That is from an article by Michael Santano. I will also put that in the description. From The Observer. So the guy that is saying he's going to bring the party together tried to whitewash Bernie Sanders supporters and make him seem racist, the most liberal senator and most progressive senator in the country, in addition to not prosecuting banks. You are everything wrong with the Democratic Party. And you know what? If you, if this guy wins, the fume that will come out of my ears the smoke and the fire. We cannot continue to go down this path. Why does he have one vote? Oh, right. Because of the rest of the Democratic establishment who is financially incentivized to continue this kind of corporatocracy, this kind of corporate Democrat bullshit. Gross. All right. I mean, like, I don't even know what to say to you guys anymore because reading that article was as deflating as an article, any article I've read in weeks. If the, oh, 
You know, I mean, this is, they still have not learned a goddamn thing. They have not learned a goddamn thing. Have a great day. <laughs>